cook it with emotion. <laughs> yeah, treat it like it's sacred, like it's sacred. Burners Without Borders um, began right after Hurricane Katrina. And there was a group of folks who left the burn and went to Biloxi, Mississippi area and helped renovate the destroyed Vietnamese temple. Um, and then they sort of moved on to gift their time to multiple, many other um, post-Katrina renovation projects. So it's this really cool story of people taking all the resources and infrastructure that we use at Burning Man um, and bringing it out into um, communities that have a need or a want for it. And that's really the whole ethos of Burners Without Borders. So um, it kind of began as a, a disaster relief moment. Um, there have been like cool library shipping containers that go around to various natural disasters. Um, there's an ongoing program for you to loan your theme camp infrastructure um, to any various natural disaster. Um, so if you have a theme camp that has stuff that sits in storage for all year, besides Burning Man, for example, um, those programs are available to sort of direct our collective energy and effort um, to support um, and have solidarity with people who um, are um, have some sort of need in, 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 a, in a, any given moment. So this is our mission right here. Uh, I think when compared to the regional burn network, you'll find that Burners Without Borders um, is a lot more amorphous. Um, so that being said, um, you know, we do follow the 10 principles, of course, um, but there is a really wide variety of projects that anybody can do. So it kind of fulfills this thing that we know about Burning Man, that it's sort of a permission engine, um, kind of a network giving people the ability to um, uh, go out and do things and have a community of people backing them up um, to do them that they're passionate about. Cool. <clears throat> Thanks, Molly. And like as Molly was saying, they, they, the origins of Burners Without Borders was uh, this disaster relief effort or as it occurred but since then they've evolved into doing more uh, or they continue to continue the disaster relief but they're, now they're doing uh micro grants for different you know air areas they're doing civic ignition grants i was fortunate to be a beneficiary one in 2019 um so they're they're still doing disaster relief but they really moved have morphed or expanded their reach into like it's communities I, I like to think of it as like they've got into my backyard and i'm happy to be part of that um, so currently there's 45 uh, Burns Up Orders chapters or working groups um, all over the world. And um, the, uh, you'll, if, you, if you are in one, if there's one in your area, I'd really encourage you to look at, reach out to one, but it sounds like we might even have some opportunities to even create a working group or, or um, a chapter if there's people motivated. And you have a great resource uh, bank of resources to work with if you're actually interested in doing that. Um, I can say that from my experience. The Burners the burn Up Order Network would be more than happy and motivated to help you get to start a working group or chapter if you're in, if that's of interest to you. If not, just even a civic project, it's great. So um, any questions before we, we, we kind of move on here about where Burners Up Borders is about, how they started? Great, okay. Um, Molly, you want to just what, kind of talk through these talking points? Molly and I kind of collaborated and kind of put together these kind of talking points about, uh, you know, growing your mutual network. Yeah, so um, I wanted to touch on this idea of mutual aid in this discussion because I think um, it's a really helpful framework. Um, and you're welcome to, to Google it and kind of learn more about the ethos behind it. Um, but generally, um, the idea is um, to create a supportive network of people um, to establish community resiliency. So when the forest in your backyard is burning down, um, you can contact somebody and ask for 
a bucket of water <laughs> or whatever it is that you may need in that moment. Um, and so, you know, this has been part of human tradition for forever. Um, but I think um, what we're seeing now, specifically within the Border Burners Without Borders group, is that um, we're really we're able to rely on each other to kickstart projects um, by partnering really well with organizations in our areas. Um, and so, what that actually looks like is um, in Portland, what we do is. We host a uh, monthly or bi-monthly Burners Without Borders meetup, um, and that's really the central function of our chapter, is to sort of hold space for people um, to talk about their projects. So that could look like um, just inviting five nonprofits to come speak um, to a group of burners. That could look like five burners coming to do a, a volunteer ask for people who they want to come help with their art project or they wanna organize an action day to do, um, you know, a, uh, like a pollution, like a litter cleanup. Um, so really it's, it's very, um, it's meant to be a supportive network, not an instructive um, plan of this is, this is what you should do in your community. Um, you know, you can kind of think of it like a mutual aid, like the scientific method. Um, like identifying a problem, um, testing out a few solutions, and then eventually just really like nailing on some results. Um, it doesn't mean that you shouldn't start small um, and, and try out a few things um, and, and expect, you know, big results right away. Um, so in our chapter, we say um, think big, but start small. Um, you know, we all only have so much time um, and we find that kind of creating a space for people to ideate on their own and bring projects in to a working group or a chapter is really effective because um, even if you decide to take on the role of chapter lead, or if you find somebody in your community who would make a great working group lead or chapter lead, um, ultimately what they can do is just really help hold a container. Um, just like Burning Man holds a container for all of our creative endeavors that we all love to do. Um, so those are just a couple points that I wanted to highlight here. Um, I'll pass it to Patrick if you had anything specifically that you wanted to share. Um, no, we'll go ahead and just, uh, well, if, just a couple points to Molly, what Bill and what Molly's kind of said is that, um, and we'll hopefully show you some examples of what we're kind of we're talking about both in Portland and Sacramento and there may be other other areas um but the idea of like just uh you know you can start small or what what we'll also share with you is you can partner with an existing institution that might be helping um someone already sometimes you don't have to start from scratch you can be a platform to support an existing institution we'll maybe share some examples of that as well um on how you can kind of get started with your your civic initiative and we'd also by the way we'd also if you have anything specific of interest that you have, would like to do we'd like to hear about that too in the course of this this discussion so um so molly you want to just kind of run through some of the things you're doing in portland yeah um i wanted to run through just a couple of these with you guys on this session because one thing that i found really helpful over this past year um just kind of in the sense of just like restoring and keeping my faith in humanity was um, we had these uh, weekly or bi-weekly burners without borders community calls. And it was a chance for all the chapters to get together and just talk about um, what they're doing. And it was, it was really, really powerful to see like one person in a maker's warehouse making masks you know, while another person is um, talking about a community garden project that they launched, you know, while five of their kids are running around on Zoom, and another person is talking about, you know, getting um, people to loan out their RVs to frontline healthcare professionals, and how can they replicate that in other regions. Um, so just seeing like the creativity of the community and, and what people were out there doing and then replicating that here in Portland was really impactful for me. So Patrick and I just kind of wanted to share that, um, a couple of the projects that we've done with you. So maybe it can help like spark um, something that you might be passionate about, that you might be excited about doing. 
Um, and I think um, Bo's been dropping the links in the chat as well. If you're really interested in starting a working group or a chapter or just organizing a volunteer day in your community, um, I think it, it's really helpful to um, get on some of the BWB social media groups um, and just kind of see what people are doing and getting excited about and go from there if you really just aren't sure where to start. Um, so in 2020, um, obviously we had a lot going on in the disaster relief area um, beginning with COVID. So we decided to do um, micro grants to part-time artists to help them pay their rent, um, people who had lost their jobs because of COVID. Um, so we, we uh, wrote something up, created a GoFundMe page and gave out like four or five rounds of grants um, to artists to cover their, their rent checks while they were in those first few months. And we were all just kind of figuring out where to go and what to do with this situation we all found ourselves in. Um, and then in Portland, we had a really active Black Lives Matter movement um, this summer um, and a lot of subsequent, you know, major um, community turmoil um, that happened as a result of some of the actions of local authorities. Um, and so we, we decided to partner with a group called PDX Resistance Assistance, um, and we basically gave out hygiene supplies, personal care items, um, food and beverages to people who were just at the protests. Um, and so that's something to keep in mind as you're looking into civic initiatives as well. Um, if you decide to do it under the Burners Without Borders um, uh, umbrella, you just wanna be mindful that you're not um, allowed in, in 501c3 nonprofits to um, to really work with or against political candidates. So just keep in mind um, that it's, it's something to be cognizant of as you're looking really into civic um, and social and political work to just be mindful of protecting everybody's uh, proper nonprofit statuses. Um, I see a hand up, sorry, I'm not great at monitoring the chat right now, um, so feel free to- Yeah, well, I, I was gonna add on to that though. Yes, when it comes to candidates, like political candidates, you gotta stay away from it, but that's not to say that you can't engage in political advocacy. Like, in fact, that's some 501c3's purpose for existing. So, you know, I mean, in the last election, like clearly like mask wearing and this sort of stuff, like that should have never been political, if you as a 501c3 got a, had a get out the mask campaign, that's not going to put anybody's status in jeopardy. So just it's worth making that distinction. Yeah. Yes. Great Th point. Thanks, for, thanks, thanks for adding that, Ben. Um, I'll, I'll, when I get to my stuff, I'll share a little bit about the polit getting on the political side too. And I've always, we've always said, if we ever had any questions, we just reach out to Molly and um, Molly and Chris, Relove and ask for guidance in those those times, those are, if you have any questions about that. Oh yeah, you have your, your Burning Man HQ, um, Burners Without Borders squad. Their names are Christopher Breedlove and Molly Rose. Um, so those folks are amazing and they're available as resources. Um, if you decide to start a working group or chapter, they will meet with you regularly in the beginning phases of your chapter or your working group. Um, to um, offer assistance. Um, so for us in Portland, I think that happened for the first like six months to a year maybe. Um, so there are definitely resources at Burning Man Org that wanna help you succeed um, if you decide to go that route. Um, and then the upper, other couple of projects we did was um, we partnered with a nonprofit called Taking Ownership PDX. Um, they help uh, try to combat gentrification by renovating and reviving um, black owned homes in historic black communities in Portland. Um, so we had burners out there doing renovation work, things like landscaping, um, you know, installing plumbing and really just like making people's homes um, sparkle. So that was super fun because burners love to swing hammers and um, they're a new nonprofit with a really great mission. So we still work with them quite a bit to funnel um, donations and volunteers their way. Um, then we had wildfire in Oregon. So um, this link that you'll see is basically to a Google form that we created. Um, we had a, one form where people could offer things, one where people could 
um, request that they wanted something. Um, and then we just had spreadsheets on the back. Um, and so we were able to actually house um, 20 people who were displaced from the fires and match people with things like um, clothing that they needed in like unusual sizes that wasn't available at all the, the typical places um, and just really hone into specific requests of people who had immunodeficiencies, disabilities, all that kind of stuff. Um, so if anybody wants to implement a, a mutual aid model like that, um, I'd be happy to just share our spreadsheets with you. Um, and then lastly, right now, we're working with a community called um, C3PO, which stands for Creating Conscious Communities with People Outside. Um, and it's a, it's a coalition of folks, uh, and we're calling our initiative JEDI, um, Joy, Empowerment, Diversity, and Inclusion in PDX. Another coalition member is Right to Dream 2, um, or R2D2. And um, they are micro village communities of 40 people each who live in uh, tiny homes right in the middle of the city. So we've been able to really use a lot of the lessons that we know from theme camps um, to support these, these communities that are very really similar uh, to theme camps. So we've built uh, 40 foot geodesic domes to serve as their living rooms, um, which you'll see on the next slide. Um, this is kind of what they look like in downtown Portland. And I see there's a, a Ben there has a hand raised as well. Sorry, Ben, I keep missing you. <laughs> no? Oh, there you are. Okay. So yeah, um, that is, those are just some examples of what we have going on in Portland. Again, um, really the options of how you can make an impact in your community are limitless. I've seen people start compost piles for their neighborhoods um, where everybody drops their stuff and, and you know you have a great stock of community compost at the end of it. Um, I've seen people um, clean up um, really, really polluted beaches and then um, host a burn on the site afterward. Um, so really, the, the world is, is your oyster when it comes to civic activation, and it can start really small. So I would say find a couple of really strong collaborators, whether those are nonprofits, artists, individuals, entrepreneurs, um, businesses, anybody in your community that you respect and want to partner with, um, and start small, and um, you'll, uh, you'll, you'll go far. Thanks, thanks, Molly. Any questions for Molly or comments? If we roll on. I, I, I do want to make one comment. Um, thanks, Frog. I do want to make one comment that you know you're only seeing when you see you're seeing Sacramento and Portland. There are burners without borders all over the world doing just these wonderful civic disaster relief kind of things. Um, and there is a saying in within burners without borders that we are a duocracy. You know we do stuff, we make stuff happen. Um, we help, we're, we're, we value our communities. And you know, one of the personal things I get out of this, it's a kind of a personal mission of my own, is to show the default world there is a different narrative about Burning Man other than what you've been reading in the papers and the magazines and the, you know everything you 90% of you read is all salacious and titillating, right? Um, there is this really cool community that follows these 10 principles. And we're trying, we're trying, and I think all, a lot of burner cell boarders are trying to bring that into the default world, into your community, and show an example of how Burning Man can really be transformative to a to a community. And you deal, like I said, it doesn't have to be huge. You can do something on a very local, a very local uh, uh, level. And that's what we've been doing a lot in Sacramento. Um, let's see here. So. I'm just going to kind of like said Molly, we're just like we're going to I'm going to go through some of the things we've been doing in Sacramento and give you a little background on how Sacramento the chapter actually started. It really started with two civic ignition grants that was awarded to the, our region through something called a multi-regional summit, which was uh, Sacramento, Lake Tahoe and Reno. Those leadership groups within that groups, the RCs especially, um, Kind of got together. We did a summit. We did um, some submissions were submitted, and two civic ignition grants were were awarded. Um, one was 
to a, a, a group, um, a project I'll talk to you about called Mope Your City that Ed Fletcher has been doing along with Sacramento Valley Spark that he can, they continue to do. The second uh, um, award was given to my camp, Roasted Bros and Coffee Hose. And um, it's, it's, been, it's, it's still coffee. It was basically a coffee theme. And it was basically replicating what we did at Burning Man. But we put our community, certain people in our community behind the, the, the service, if you will. We'll talk a little bit about that. Um, it has kind of morphed into some things, um, uh, which I can show you guys as, as well, that um, we've got within the um, nonprofit we have, we've got three programs that I can show you a little more details on or projects to help the coffee farmers all around the world. Um, we've got one in Costa Rica, we've got one in Uganda, and we have one in El Salvador. And you, when you, uh, the folks that work with the Kiwi Burn, what I can share with you in maybe a little more detail, we got uh, permission from Burning Man organization to actually raise funds as part of a Burning Man sanctioned event. And that's related now, that has trans, um, basically transformed, and we have a GoFundMe going, um, working on this as well. But what we're doing is we're going to um, renovate two schools in El Salvador. And, but the group that actually did the fundraising and did the service was a, a group called California Dreamers, they're DACA recipients. So this is where you get a little, little in the political section here when you talk about DACA, but we've got permission from Burn South Borders to, per, to pursue this. And so the California Dreamers, this DACA recipient, the recipients did a fundraiser, part of a Burning Man sanctioned event. And we've got $3,600 approximately is gonna go back to these schools in El Salvador. And what's really cool is one of these DACA recipients went to the school that you see this picture in, and she said when she went to that school, it didn't have a roof. Um, they have seven desks in the school for 20 kids. Um, we we're looking to get desks for all of them. As we were starting, it was one school, 20 kids. Then the community came back to us a couple of days later and said, can we add another school? So now we have two schools and 91 kids that we're working on getting uh, desk, school supplies, and renovating the schools. We've got pictures of these schools that really need some, some renovation. So really, we're really excited about that particular project, but I'm, I really want to drill on with like the Kiwi, your Kiwi burn. You know, if you guys are interested in maybe kicking off a civic ignition project, you might be able to tack on some kind of a civic thing with your civic, your Kiwi, your, your, your sanctioned event. We did that with burning, with the burning man sanctioned event. And it was kind of a first time for us to do something like that. But I think we're really pleased on how that has come out and what we're, what we're able to do um, on this particular project. Um, um, we've also, I'll cover, we're doing some things in Uganda and Costa Rica. Um, another project that I'll show you a little bit is called Moop Your City. And I like this project because this is, this is all this is, is some, the community getting together and going out and pick up tra picking up trash in a park, right? And um, it's if you're talking to somebody that's not familiar from a default world and they're, you know, again, they're wearing their tutus, they're wearing their burner playa um, or whatever, and you're picking up trash and helping the community. It's a very simple project to kind of get started where you can maybe find like-minded people that want to do something. Just come in, you clean up, you clean up an area, right? And um, you kind of make a little bit of an event of it. Um, and uh, sometimes just explaining to someone that's, you know, what, what MOOP is, is kind of a conversation starter, right? Um, so, uh, and then we've also done, I, we've done some work with our local homeless shelters. And what we've also done with the Civic Ignition Grants, one of the grants we did, we made up, we partnered, we didn't start from scratch. We worked with the local institution that is supporting the homeless people in uh, our homeless community in, in Placer County. Um, we also will go just go down and serve a breakfast or provide a breakfast service for Loaves and Fishes, which is the organization that helps the homeless community in, in Sacramento. Um, we've done some racial justice uh, work and we've done some work with the uh, receiving home in Sacramento, but um, if uh, we can we can get into a little more details about these kind of projects, but the the main thing I think I want to kind of share with you guys is that it doesn't take you can start very simple, right? Um, you can just start with a group of people that go you want to go together and pick up some trash, or maybe you want to support you want to collectively support something that's going on. I think it's very it's it's an easy way to get started, and it's also a way to attract like-minded people 
that you can be the, the process of forming your working group and your, um, your, you know, your chapter at some point. And you will get is a lot of support if you need it from the Burning Man organization or the Burn Cell Borders organization. They're looking to maybe build more working groups and chapters um, this going forward. So is uh, you guys have any other questions or uh, would you like to get into any more details on any of these projects that Molly and I are kind of shared with you? I'm going to show, well, let me just share you this. this. This is a video. This is one of the uh, the projects that we did through it, that we got through a Civic Ignition Grant. And just to give you a little background, what we did was we took what our camp does at Burning Man, which is gifts pour over coffee to the community. Um, instead of our group doing the coffee service, we put the homeless community, the people that were vetted with by the gathering in, the people that do the uh, deal and the staff, these folks did the coffee service. They did the gifting of the coffee. And the first one we did back in July of 2019 was with Placer County. We did it for the Placer County employees. And Placer County actually put this, this little video together that I'll show you. They put this together and they put it on their, web, their website. Stop right up if you're done grinding. So anyway, that was that was that was manifested from a burn, uh, the Civic Ignition Grant, and what was really kind of uh, I guess rewarding about this uh, um, this project, if you will, and I've got some slides where the director for the gathering and this this uh, experience um, for the folks that guested the gathering in, it gave them a, a sense of purpose, it gave them dignity, right? Um, and it gave them the confidence to actually go out and interview for jobs. It gave them the confidence to go out and talk to a landlord, which was really important because these were the folks that were on, were in a program to move out of the shelter and find and move into some sort of permanent housing. So it was really important, I thought, with this program project is that we partnered with at the institution, right? When, when you're working with homeless folks, they vetted the folks for us, the folks are really ready for this program. So we didn't have, you know, some of the, obviously the homeless community and a lot of have, have some serious health, mental, mental health issues, addiction issues. And personally, that's kind of out of our wheelhouse to be able to, to deal with. So partnering with the gathering in the institution, they were able to vet the folks that were ready for our project. And it was most important that it wasn't just the guests, it was the staff of the gathering in, the people that work with these folks, they did, they did this coffee service as well. So we did it for, um, we did it for one bin for the Placer County, um, uh, employees, we went into the office of the Health and Human Services and did a coffee service, and we did it for the facilities group. We went down to the city of Roseville and did it. We were getting ready to go and do something for the chamber, um, the Realtors Association, first our first venture into something like the private sector, and then COVID hit. So we kind of had to kind of shut that down. But we're really looking forward to kind of resurrecting that stuff as as COVID restrictions are are uh, are being lifted. 
but it, um, I think this just gives you an example of partnering with an existing institution and just supporting that institution and, and taking a little piece of Burning Man, which is the gifting you know, of coffee. This is what our camp does at Burning Man. We, we gift pour over coffee, right? So we, you know, instead of giving that coffee to the homeless community, which we did, um, we just flipped it around. They were doing the gifting. We put them in the position to do the gifting of the free coffee. And I think it's a, it's a wonder, a wonderful experience on both sides of the folks that are providing the service to people that are receiving that free, free cup of coffee. Any questions, comments? I have one. Lord. Yeah. I'm curious when you're, when a community is thinking about kind of getting civic initiatives off the ground, have you come across like, what are the, I, I, are there certain obstacles to kind of getting things going? Is it like a sense of somebody to do it? Like the duocracy thing? Is it, somebody who um, kind of reach, knows who to reach out to, to partner with an organization? Is it um, finding money for what you need to do? Is it finding people? Do you have a sense of like, sort of what, what might prevent or keep people from like really pursuing these ideas and how they might overcome that? Yeah. Molly, do you want to start or or um, I can jump in on that? Yeah, sure. Um, so I can tell you, you know, the answer that I would have given you two years ago is really different than the answer I would give you today. Um, uh, our, our culture in Portland, you know, like much of the world has been um, very quarantined for the year. So um, even though uh, when we built the domes project, we were socially distanced and we were masked and those kinds of things, um, we did really have to sort of sell that to the community and create really strong policies around what these volunteer projects were going to look like um, so that they would feel safe doing them. Um, and so I would say um, right now in Portland, um, we're sort of moving into a lower risk category. So it creates a lot more room for us to be inclusive um, in those volunteer opportunities. When um, I normally we would promote it just like promoting a burn, right? We would put some stuff up on Facebook. We would have a planning meeting or multiple planning meetings, depending on how big it is. Um, and every, we would ask anyone and everyone that we know, like, you should come check out this cool thing. There's going to be cool stuff happening there. Just like inviting a friend to Burning Man. Um, but during COVID times, it's like, well, maybe we can only have, you know, five people join in on this opportunity. So I think the barriers for people, um, are that it feels like it's going to be really hard and it feels overwhelming and it feels like it's gonna be a big time commitment. So um, what we found works really well is to provide a good mix of like open space for people to propose their own ideas and be more active participants. And then also in tandem provide some, um, shall we call them plug and play um, opportunities for people um, because we all have stuff going on. Everyone has stuff. Um, and it's sometimes a lot more manageable for somebody to like see a Facebook event, like, oh shit, people are cleaning up litter in the park in an hour. I can, I can do that for 30 minutes and throw my tutu on. Um, and some people are like, well, that doesn't really interest me. I want to, I want to run a whole group and it's going to evolve in two years into its own nonprofit and burners Up borders was just my incubator. Um, so I think really just the barriers are, um, not financial in my um, experience. If you, if the idea is good, the money, you can find the money for the most part. Um, but I think, yeah, we, Burners like to do a lot of different things and we like to, to all take a lot of stuff on. 
um, you, you know, you won't often find people in our community just kind of sitting around on television, like, I don't know what to do today. Um, <laughs> so I think it's pulling people in, into those, those opportunities and calling people in. Um, and we found that once we did a couple of projects on our own, like the chapter leads started kind of doing our own projects. And then over time, people are like, oh, like that inspires me to do this other thing. Um, and then they started proposing in our working group, started proposing projects to us. And that's really ultimately what we want. Um, but I think having a healthy mix of both of showing people um, that they have, um, you know, they have everything that they need to do uh, to make a really big impact. Um, and then also kind of providing a good mix of, of letting people participate where they're at. You know, I, I, if I can add to what Molly's saying, you know, and as we have, we have our Facebook page and I'll show you a couple of posts that we've done on it, but uh, everyone that would join the page, you know, you'd reach out to, we would reach out to them collectively, um, Laura, and, uh, you know, say, what are you in? What, what's your passion, right? And there's a lot of it is with the homeless community or it might be, might be immigration, immigrants, helping immigrants or something along that layer. We try to find out what you know, you're joining Burns, you want to see, you're joining this page, what, what, you know, what resonates with you, right? Um, if you can kind of tap into that. Um, uh, I also just kind of wanted to share with you too. Um, let me share my screen here. So um, we ended up making these kind of cool t-shirts. It's got this big, nice looking Sacramento Burns South Borders logo on the back, right? And we got a lot of interest from these people that wanted to be one of these t-shirts, right? So we'd all, every, as, as they bought the shirts, we were saying, okay, well, what do you want to do? You know, they were going to have this. So Laura, one of your, to, to your points, seems like things that could help people if they can identify themselves with the cause or they can identify themselves now with burn cell borders. And we go off as COVID restrictions are lifted now, we can actually go out as a group, right? And we have this kind of a, identification in some ways that people can can you know kind of um i guess latch on to right i mean um i'm anxious to see how that's going to work right because these shirts went out in COVID time right no one's been able to to get together but now we can kind of say you think about it you got 20 25 people going out and maybe picking up trash or you're helping the homeless or something and and you've got that identity that identity i think um it's gonna be interesting i'm really interested and kind of excited to see when we go actually go out and do things or we're in the burn cell borders that's going to generate more more interest in what we're doing right um that's uh i think that's one way i think you can kind of the challenge but speaking of the challenges i i think uh sometimes when you lead in and say we're burn cell borders we're a burning man organization um people kind of roll their eyes you know, you know, and they think of, okay, well, am I going to have a bunch of naked people running around doing whatever, right? Um, but I think the, 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 what motivates me is to go in and you show them this is something different. You know, these are really what the 10 principles are. You know, we're helping these homeless folks or we're helping this, we're helping a school in El Salvador. We're helping some folks in Uganda. Um, and by the same time, we're kind of helping our own homeless people in our backyard. And yes, we are burners without borders, right? This is this is kind of what who we are with this duocracy. Um, but I think you will kind of run up to some kind of things. And I, I think also as you build credibility, like start small, you know, do you clean up some trash around maybe somebody's business? Like when we did the Moop Your City, we did a we did some, we helped clean up some guys, some trash around some guy's driving range, and he took our trash for us and helped us get rid of it. Um, but Helping a little business, maybe a local business, get their clean up, clean up around them. You build, you build, a, you build some credibility, right, within the community. But um, sometimes you go out and you kind of want to reach out to some county official and or some other organization. They want to know well, what's your title, right? Who are you? I don't have time for you. You know, you, you know another. So I think you start small. You build, you build a reputation, you know, a positive reputation, and I think you just kind of, kind of continue to build on that. Um, if you're looking to do something. You know the, the challenge but sometimes you see these challenges uh uh laura sometimes when you're going to work with an institution like we did that they kind of say you're a burning man group what are you going to be doing in my neighborhood <laughs> right um, 
So you do run against those are some of the challenges I think you do run you do run against, run up against, particularly in a, in our area as well. Placer County is a somewhat you're getting in the foothills. It becomes more rural in our area, so we're not as metropolitan as say Sacramento, and you do have some different pers different ideas of different things. So, um, if that answered your question, or um, but I would just say you know start small, find an identity, find people together, and, and continue to kind of you know, work together as a group, kind of build your group. Thank yeah. you. That was great. Yeah. Um, okay. I do. All, yeah. And I do also want to kind of also kind of acknowledge um, there's Angela Gentry um, as well as um, Kathleen Hoffman, who is our regional RC, right? And we've had a lot of great guidance and directions from Kathleen as far as being in the RC. Um, having an RC part of our working group slash chapter working with us that that um, I would recommend if you have an RC I think some of you folks are maybe an RC having an RC involved in your startup for your BWB I think is very valuable um, I can't say how much Kathleen Hoffman has helped Angela and I get our thing started you know keeping us along the lines of you know the burner stuff um, so I'd like to put that out there too that's a something to consider if you have an RC in your group try to get them involved with your your startup or your working group or your chapter you know i if if so what i'd like to if if you don't have any questions i got i got a question for the uh our folks in new zealand that are looking or interested in starting a working group or a chapter, what what do you guys want to do? Do you have kind of like an idea or any inspiration or something that you guys want to do to get your working group or chapters kind of started? Yep, I, I can <clears throat> I can speak to that. Um, so I took over the chair role um, probably about eighteen months ago. Now it was acting role initially, and now it's being formalised. Um, but one of the things I was pushing was community liaison, and that's community um, in the township around the uh, where we hold our events, a town called Hunterville, which has a population of 400 people, and working with them on their various projects. And where our event is based is um, the uh, First Nation um, in New Zealand is Maori. And so we have a local tribe there called the Ngāti Hawiti. Um, so I've been engaging with them to look at um, working on projects with them as well. Um, I had a meeting the other night with the um, Hunterville Community Board, um, which has representatives of various community groups. And so I went along and saw them and we started chatting about various projects um, that we could get involved with um, to, just to help them along um, because we have a lot of people and resources and things like that. And I'd always been interested in the Burners Without Border um, concept. And as I say, we had Doxy come over and um, spend uh, one of our events with us. Um, and she's obviously has a lot of projects that she has going. And it was really to get an understanding of where Burners Without Borders starts and where other things start and finish. Because if you have an event that's working with a community, um, where does sort of borders without Burners Without Borders sort of um, come into its own, um, as opposed to just the event or whatever actually engaging with a community? Um, so it's just to get an idea of those sort of things. Um, but we've we've got a huge number of projects that we could um, take up on um, and that some of them are, are art-based ones like a mural in the township. Um, we're looking at a, a cycleway and bikeway um, to bring more tourists into the town, um, a local ambulance station. Um, but the other thing that Kiwi Burn is trying to do now, we were set up as a one event um, society originally. So we're looking at changing our constitution so we can do year round things and do regional things. And we're going to be working with the RCs to bring in all the regional um, events that occur around the country and try and coordinate things and supply resources and assets to them. Um, so just on that, I was very pleased to see that Shelley, one of our latest RCs, is in this in this session. It wasn't organised, so um, we've got the RC support there straight away. Cool. So I guess in, in, in simple terms, my question is, where does sort of Burners Without Borders fit in um, to the whole scheme of things as opposed to event-based liaison with communities? Yeah. Um, so I, 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 what I would, what I would, would uh, have it kind of answer that is that um, with burners out borders, you don't necessarily, you know, it can be, it can almost be whatever you want to do. There's no kind of like limitation, like you said, you don't have to be like a one event organization, or you could spin off. It sounds like Annie, you, you have a, a, a great within the Kiwi burn. You've probably got everything 
the people, the network of folks already to kind of start a working group or a chapter, right? So I think the uh, it, where it can start is where you, if you guys find out what's your what's the civic project that you guys want to start with. And that's where I where I would say it would start with. Just start with a simple civic project. It sounds like you've got the, all your organization and everything sort of in place. You could just be a sister organization to your key where you burn. Your your so you right now you guys are probably your own five hundred one c or your own yeah. nonprofit, right? Um, uh, I think you I I think you can just make it almost like a you can work you could, the same people could be you know part of your burn out burn out borders working group slash chapter. And, um, you know, I, I think you can kind of work, you know, we can reach, if you don't know Molly Rose and Christopher Breedlove, we definitely want to get you introduced to those, those folks. They can kind of also put some parameters around Andy, what, you know, what, where, where, where it would start, right? How would you, as a separate organization, start that? And in Sacramento, we did start up Burners Without Borders as a separate organization. There is a, a, a very active group called Sacramento Valley Spark. They put the, through the drive through event that we partnered with um, recently um, last month with this El Salvador school deal. So, but we, we are a separate, or we definitely are a separate separate entity. And I think you, you wanna have it as a separate entity with your separate uh, board of directors or your, your groups. Um, but you can still, you still can collaborate and partner, right? Yep. Um, I think that's how I would, I would say it, you know, um, it needs to be separate from your, your Kiwi burn group. You set that up separately, but then you can also, you know, when they, when you have your meetings, you can probably start talking, well, do you, you know, is anyone interested in starting up a burners out borders working group or chapter, right? Yep. And um, from there, you, like I said, you got, sounds like you got a lot of, great civic things that would really, and it's about helping the community. I, you know, um, a lot of the burner burner groups are set about like, okay, doing that, doing that one big regional, regional burn, the big event, which is great, right? You have all that energy and you make an event. Um, to me, it seems like you take, you can tap into that energy, right? And create something that may be, may be long, longer lasting to your community. If you're going to put in some, like some of these projects you were talking about doing, um, and then your community starts to see you as, well, this is a group that is more about just having a fun big event, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then you get, then you start getting people from the local community that want to get involved with Burner Cell Borders. And within the Sacramento, what I'm kind of proud of as well is that we have a lot of people that have never been to the burn that are a part of our, our group and our chapter. The person that put this logo together for us has never been to, never been on the playa. But it's just interested in 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 Burning Man and Burning South Borders. So that's another thing I think that I think is being encouraged. Obviously, is like you you have the you know you want to go into the default world in some ways, right? And you want to do these events and you want to show what the ten principles can manifest itself, right? And um, we were um, Molly, you want to kind of go through the manifestations of the uh, um, the ten principles? Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah to, I was just gonna yeah. go ahead. I was just gonna echo your comments, Patrick, that um there are lots of people who are interested in um I I because I'm involved, I'm on the board for my regional burn as well. And I find that the people who volunteer for our regional burn are <laughs> very are very different. Um, there's a little bit of crossover than the people who volunteer with Burners Without Borders projects, um, just like in the actual individual. So I find that by, even if you're the same person leading it, or if you identify somebody in your community who you um, think would be a great fit to start the chapter and, and run with it, um, I find that um, while there's a little bit of crossover, it's actually very different in the individuals that are able to support the different things. Um, and I do also see a lot of people who um, they find out about Burning Man culture and begin going to burns after participating in BWB projects. Um, you know, there's there have been folks in, in previous um, Portland chapters who um, received support from a Burners Without Borders project. Um, when they were homeless and years later ended up coming to our regional burn because they loved the group and, and just really vibed with the community. And so I think it's more, it's really just like that energy of calling people in um, who may not already necessarily be burners and then 
calling burners in um, to use the resources and the energy and the efforts they have to really stand in solidarity with, for example, like the Maori folks that you mentioned and start to build those community relationships in a meaningful way. Um, like I know what we usually do is when we're thinking about engaging with a group is we just start attending some of their meetings and participating in whatever they're doing um, if we're invited. And then um, we just kind of begin helping where, where we can. Um, so I think really just seeing like approaching those as peer to peer relationships is really important um, rather than kind of like we're coming in to do some sort of charity work with you or something. Um, but really making it a collaborative member driven effort, I think is really important. Right. Yeah, I think to build on that. And if you take the 10 principles, it's all about participate, participation, inclusiveness, right? And we, you try to you use those kind of principles to guide you on what you want to do. And I think we're really coming out of an unprecedented time where everybody's had the shelter in place with, with COVID. And um, let's kind of hope that we're on the right track and that things are going to open up right and as things open up i think there's going to be a, a what do you call it a wellspring of people who just want to do something right you know and to be able to do something for your community we're hoping and i'm really optimistic that we can kind of tap into that uh that uh one year two year and a half of just being not being able to do anything not being able to see people sorry dealing on zoom all the time right now you can actually go out and interact and you could tap into that and i think to now is a great time to start kind of organizing and getting ahead of that game right um we even have talked about having in california you have these stages depending where you're at you're into the orange yellow red you have a, you can kind of have a plan based on as you kind of come out and things get released and hopefully hopefully someday we're all soon we're going to all be able to be able to hug each other and do the things we've always done in the past so yeah we'd hope that you can hug and meet and do stuff as a burn cell borders kind of thing or it doesn't really again the other thing too is like it doesn't if you've got something that's kind of civic um you've got something you really want to do and i also wanted to make this point is if you get a chance to maybe in, get an endorsement or you partner with a local business don't let that stop you from doing that because maybe it doesn't fall with the 10 principles that you can just do it. It just doesn't have to be sanctioned by burning man. Right. So don't let the burning man, I don't know, the rules of burning man potentially stop you from doing something, particularly if you can like partner with the local business. Right. Um, again, reach out to Molly and Chris because burns out borders gives you as my personal experiences burns out borders gives you a little more leeway. And I have it from personal experience. This, um, we were able to kind of not, fully promote somebody's coffee business. But we, we were saying, look, if his coffee, if the question comes up, you can talk about his coffee business. And we got that permission from um, Burns Without Borders to do that. I think they're a little more receptive to doing something. But the point that they want to make is it has to be, the objective has to be about the community, has to be about the humanitarian effort. It's not about the person's business, right? Um, but Burns Without Borders gives us a little gives us that leeway and we're kind of I'm kind of excited to be able to kind of tap into that so um anyway just just a point that I want kind of want to throw out there David Letterman has this series called this person needs no introduction and he was doing an interview he's interviewing Dave Chappelle right and Dave Chappelle said his dad who was a college professor administrator said you would always say you know you we can't change the world but we can make a little corner of it really nice, right? So you can find your corner and make it nice, right? So maybe we can end on that note. Treat it with emotion. <laughs> yeah. Treat it like it's sacred, like it's sacred. Cook it with emotion. You gotta cook it. Treat it like it's sacred. Gonna make some music together. Beautiful. It is fantastic to see you again.